Go Module Mirror served backdoor to devs for three plus years. Supply Chain Attack targets developers using the Go programming language. This is my main issue with languages like Go, with Python, with Rust a lot of the times, in particular with JavaScript. So much of the code that you write depends on third-party code that is sourced from a package manager that any violation of supply chain trust causes issues like this. A mere proxy Google runs on behalf of developers of the Go programming language pushed a backdoored package for more than three years until Monday, after researchers who spotted the malicious code petitioned for it to be taken down twice. This is happening all over the ecosystem of Go and Python, etc. Hackers know that people who write code in these languages have to use third-party code. And as a result, there are mechanisms in place that allow you to exploit that trust and put bad code up. So the system that we're talking about here is the Go module mirror, which caches open source packages uh, that are on GitHub and elsewhere so that downloads are faster and ensure they're compatible with the rest of the Go ecosystem. If you had to go and git clone every time you wanted to use a Go package, that would effectively be like an unorchestrated DDoS of the GitHub environment. And so what Google did is they have a mirror that sits between you and GitHub and says, hey, I'll proxy that request for you. I'll store a cached version of that package. So instead of us DDoSing GitHub, we can DDoS our little proxy that we have vertical scaling on that we can actually make faster when we need to. Since November of 21, the Google module mirror has been hosting a backdoor version of this widely available module uh, that Socket said Monday. The file uses type of squatting, a technique that gives malicious file names uh, similar to widely used legitimate ones and plants them on popular repositories. So if you don't know what typo squatting is, back in the day, uh, there used to be a little typo squat, but if you type Google with three Gs and you go to google.com, there used to be a type of squat that would exploit your browser and download malware to your computer. I infected my computer so many times with that vulnerability, both LimeWire and that one and others. Uh, but this idea of making a mistake when you're typing, making a typo and hackers sitting on it, is what re is referred to as typo squatting. Now, in the event that someone makes a typo or even a minor variation from the correct name while fetching a file on the command line, they land on a malicious file instead of the one they wanted. So the, the typo squat here is bolt db go slash bolt, which is a you know an interface for a, uh, a, a database system. Uh, but instead of it being bolt db, which is the proper name, people type in bolt db dash go, which will give you the malicious version. Now, the problem with this is that bolt db is actually dependent on by over 8,000 other packages. If anybody who managed these packages were to type of squat and change this to this, I mean, I've done that before where you're, you're editing code, the package isn't behaving right, something is wrong with the code. Oh, maybe I have the wrong version. Oh, I'm coding in Go. What if I just type boltdb dash Go and now I've gotten the malicious version. The malicious package first appeared on GitHub. The file there was eventually reverted back to a legitimate version, but by then the Go module mirror had cached the backdoor one. Now this is the entire premise of the exploit, right? The entire reason this is able to happen. When you upload a package to the Google package mirror, you push a package to a middleman effectively that holds the package for you, but it never goes back and checks if the GitHub repo has been updated. So what the hackers did here is they created a typo squatted repo on GitHub. They published a backdoored version of that repo with a hidden remote access mechanism. Basically that means there's like a backdoor that either calls out to a server or it does something malicious locally and allows another hacker to get into your system from there. Uh, the Go module mirror fetches and caches the version that is backdoored, this current version, but then the threat actor is able to modify the Git repo, replacing their 131 version with a clean version. Now, because the module mirror has no way of going back and checking that the repo was changed, if you went and inspected the code of the repo, if you did a proper open source source code analysis, you would say, oh, this code is safe. But there's actually no way for you to go and audit the code of the mirror without just downloading it locally, which by that point, you're probably already going to run it. Now, despite the GitHub repo appearing safe, the module mirror continues to serve the malicious version of the 313. And eventually this is the disclosure process of them telling the repo there's a vulnerability and them arguing a little bit in between the third and the, uh, the 30th and the third, eventually the, the package got cleaned up. Representatives from both Google and Go didn't respond to emails asking what steps are taken to ensure the safety of modules made through the mirror. The reason for this is like, this is kind of just an inherent flaw 
with the the package system, right? Like there really is no way pending some kind of automated scanning or like manual review to tell you that a package is or is not malicious. Now, obviously in open source world, the whole point of open source partially is to create an ecosystem where people are manually reviewing these packages, making sure none of the code says, oh, and also spawn a remote shell and call out to this server. If they have a middleman cache, that doesn't give you access to the code, and then they're not checking for the repos to be checked, you're kind of creating this inherent problem where people could just push bad code to the repo and not have any way of checking. Now, luckily, as of today, and actually I checked on, on it before I recorded this video, the malicious GitHub package and also the malicious Go module in the proxy mirror has been removed, and an analyst from Socket, and I think uh, Capslock as well have confirmed this. But yeah, it's just, it's an interesting time to be alive, right? Coding is, harder than ever, I would argue, mainly because of how many dependencies code has to, to make basic things happen. And when you begin to imply this, when you, when you begin to require this trust in other people's code, it makes it very hard to fundamentally understand that you are writing safe code. Right? You can use language like Go that is garbage collected and inherently has almost zero runtime memory safety vulnerabilities aside from like a null pointer DREF kind of thing, or if you're using like a nil error or a nil, a nil uh, value. But now, when you have to depend on all this other code, it creates a little bit of a different kind of a threat model from a security standpoint. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this video, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button on the video, hit subscribe, and then go check out this other video about a backdoor that was found in a heart monitor. Yeah, I'm serious. It's right. It's right here. Go check it out.